third lecture in mathematics. Mm -hmm. I believe now with the use of this part of the course, so today we are talking about the probability. As before, as usually, we will talk both about things that we are supposed to know for the exam and also things that uh, it would be nice for now before the course, but not necessarily at the exam. If you look at the requirements at our website about the probability, you will see that the probability part is probably the smallest. Which means you need to know all the very, very basic stuff about probability and mathematical statistics. Actually, what is the probability? What is the probability of events, independent events, dependent events? Um, a bit about distribution functions, both cumulative and uh, cumulative distribution functions, probability mass functions. So very very basic stuff. Uh, if we are talking about books, uh, the the one that I would recommend to use, not because this is the best, but because I find it pretty much okay, is probably Moorman. This is a pretty old book. Uh, if you read approximately 100 and the 150 pages out of this book, it should be enough. And also on the internet, uh, there is both the textbook and so-called Fisher. The textbook, I think, is from 1972 or 76, and another was from 1979. So this is pretty old stuff, nothing new is going on in this, uh, in this area, so you can get this one, uh, 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 this textbook, and this is pretty much a key. Uh, another textbook, which is basically an electronic textbook, a set of electronic presentations, is written by the professor from Novosibirsk. Again, I was browsing the internet and I found a lot of different materials which were written by her. I, find, uh, I found them pretty much okay. I think they might be good enough. Her name is Chernova. Uh, Natalia Saka. She is from Sibirs and she has uh, several electronic textbooks, both in mathematical statistics and in probability theory. Both of this stuff is in Russian. Uh, I think there's, uh, there should be something in Ukrainian. I'm not aware of that, but I guess uh, the material is, uh, covers pretty much everything that you need. So, we'll start with the probability theory. kind of trying to adjust those new markers. The previous one we had, they were a bit thicker. So if you don't see well what I'm writing here, just raise your hands, I will try to write more clear. So once we are talking about probability theory, we'll start with major definitions. And the very basic definition that we are going to use in the probability is the event. This is something that we cannot define. Event, when something is happened, this is some happening. So events can be sure event or certain events. This could be impossible event. And the last one is the regular event. So the certain event is the event that will definitely happen under the set of conditions. So under the set of conditions, the, the sun tomorrow will rise. Impossible event is something that will definitely not happen. If you toss a coin, the coin will not hang in the air. Again, under the set of conditions. Because I can find a set of conditions where the coin will toss in the air, the toss coin will hang in the air, right? I think you can imagine that. Random event is basically the, uh, the subject of the entire thing, or of the entire topic, uh, something that may happen or may not happen, and this is the, out, uh, the outcome of such events is going to be predict, uh, 
cannot be predicted with certainty. So the event happened, but what kind of event happened, we don't know. So this is what, uh, what is called the random event. Outcome is not certain. I think you should know all of this, and again, from, for many of you, this lecture is not about probability theory. This lecture is about language, which we use to describe different notions in probability theory. So, for random events, we can, under, uh, under, under some random events, we can define several types of the outcomes. Outcomes can be multiple. Which means more than one outcome is possible. Outcomes are uncertain. Which means we don't know what will happen. And what is important is the repetition of the experiment. The experiment can be repeated. And can be repeated with identical conditions. Identical. Once we are tossing the coin, we can toss the coin uh, how many times we want. If we want to measure the GDP, again we can uh, we can measure the GDP as many times as we want in every month if we use the same uh, if we use the same technology, if we use the same methodology. We are going to use we are going to have a different amount of GDP, and we are not very much sure what amount of GDP is going to happen next month. So in this sense. GDP amount is also uncertain. Uh, is also uncertain event. This is the random variable. Uh, also, uh, if you ask, uh, if you uh, if you're a girl and you would like to marry this boy, hearing if you marry me, it's kind of uncertain event. If you propose to the girl and say uh, say will you marry me, uh, yes is also kind of random answer. It's not exactly random, but uncertain, right? So we assume that uh, those elementary events would be incompatible incompatible uh, incompatible random events means only one outcome is possible. So in the answer, will you marry me, you will probably not want to hear yes, no, probably. Only one outcome is possible. And also, elementary events are equally possible. some example in the solid time probability books we usually have problems about some colorful balls in American literature we usually have a lot of problems with the dice and the coins so the example looks like that two dice are rolled does it mean? Do you know what other dice are? All right. It's not cubic, of course. So if we throw, uh, well, what, what happens if we roll two dice? The dice are standard from one to six, because there are some dice where we have from one to three. So we have two standard dice from one to six. So what is the probability that the sum is equal to three? Well, there are two types of solution. The first type of solution is wrong. Wrong solution means we have two possible outcomes. The first 
first is S is equal to 3, the second is S is not equal to 3. So the probability is one half. This is completely wrong logic. Uh, many people understand that this is a wrong logic. Not too many people can explain why. Can you explain why? Why is this project logic wrong? They are not equally possible. Yes, they are not equally possible. Those two outcomes are not equally possible, and this is the key here. Frequency means the ratio of favorable outcomes to the total outcomes. 